a lot. Now, for some of our readers, it won't make sense. Yeah. But I can say so many things in one language. I'll give you an example. And again, for those in the studio, mm. if you go to Ghana, there is yeah. a word called konkonsa. Konkonsa. Yeah, konkonsa. Mm -hmm. I can challenge most Ghanaians mm. to give its exact meaning in English and they'll struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I know Konkonsa. What does it mean? <laughs> it's very interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can explain the meaning then. Okay. Yeah. So, mm. just that word. Yeah. If you trans, Konkonsa means somebody who's a gossiper or right. a talebearer. Oh, all right. <laughs> but the word Konkonsa. Yeah. In its structure, that's tree. tree, tree. That's tree. That's yeah. a, that's a santi tree. Okay. So you go to Hebrew, and Hebrew in the Bible was translated first mm. to Greek, yeah, and then from Greek to Latin, mm. and then from Latin to English. So you mean certain things disappear? Absolutely, certain, yeah. they lost the meaning. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like there was never a word atonement mm. in Hebrew. Okay. The word in Hebrew is kippur. Kippur. Yes. All right. It was the Oxford scholars mm. who King James commissioned who fashioned certain words and atonement is one of them. Yeah. But the word for the day of atonement is Yom Kippur and Kippur does not mean atonement or atonement. Kippur means to cover up. All right. <laughs> it means to cover up. Okay. So so what you're looking at, what you're saying is now because of the constant interchange of languages and so on, then what we see in the Bible and what is interpreted in the Bible is something very different from the original. So again, yeah. Yeah. so we, so you ask the exact question. So what about Judaism yeah, and Judaism. Christianity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever you're going to look at truth yeah. from a religious standpoint, yeah. you are always going to have division among men. We must go back to the element of truth, the right knowledge of reality, and how it creates right attitudes in men mm. Be the bible in its original idea has eternally spoken about what the right knowledge of reality is okay. and those principles that are right are we seeing now with so many pastors around this is something that are we seeing again the transformation of christianity because um there's so many pastors Actually, Africa has probably got more than uh, half a million pastors. Nigeria alone probably has, you know, and all of them have different interpretation of the Bible. Uh, now, it comes back again to people like you, the scholars. Are we going through a, a state on which uh, somewhere along the way, I mean, re religion will probably be something that could disappear as we go along? Well, because even with the, in the Muslim faith, there are divisions within uh, various smaller uh, splinter groups of who believe in, you know, the, the Esbelas and all this. They get one thing from the Quran and they start using that. I mean, in Gabon, in Niger, and all, there are so many of those smaller, smaller ones who have different versions of the Quran that they follow, and even in Pakistan. So are we looking at, is there something as scholars you're looking at, the, the evolution of changes that are uh, to happen in the next 100 years? I, th I think in as much as you pose the question, yeah. I think it's not as difficult as that. Yeah. I think that there has to be another awareness into social science and development. Okay. We've got to move away from ritualistic application of truth. I keep forgetting you're a social scientist. <laughs> We've got to move away from ritualistic application of truth. See, truth governs the bible and those books were written they were written as history books pertaining or being able to show what was the truth of your environment the truth of how or the right practices principles which govern all humanity if we keep degenerating the discussion of social reality yeah. or existential reality to religious rituals, we would always have somebody's interpretation. Okay, but if okay. we go to what exists from the source itself, the yeah. creative source itself, yeah. then there is no debate. 
when you go to the hospital mm -hmm. for a blood transfusion, mm -hmm. it's not based on what religion you are following. Yeah. It is based on what truth the anatomy of your body is governed by. Yeah, yeah. And when they are trans, if they're giving you some transfusion, whether it's from a, pa a Pakistan man, whether it is from a Mongolian man, or whether it's from a man of Lagos, if your blood type is A, yeah. they don't ask whether you are a Christian or a Methodist or an atheist. Yeah. The truth about it is that you need blood type A yeah. for your blood. Of course. Of that course. is, those are the principles of the history and the social development in that book. Okay. And we now have to, there is an urgent need with the chaos upon the face or in the midst of humanity mm. to have to begin to leave that which has divided us yeah. and rally around that which not only would unite us but would bring value to our existence. Let me make a statement over here. And the statement is universal. Mm. Most contemporary scientists and ancient scientists were able to intuit or understand the greater phenomena of the creation by going back and looking at the principles governed in the Bible. And one of them who is known in this country, Sir Isaac Newton, yeah. in 1672, made a profound statement. You're, you're an encyclopedic. <laughs> you have encyclopedic knowledge. Of that, <laughs> and this is that's what very, he said. That's very amazing. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go to the British Library, which is at King's Cross right now, yeah, yeah. most of the writings that Sir Isaac Newton began to write yeah. was not writings pertaining to science because he studied in Cambridge University, yeah. but they were pertaining to the Bible. And he studied thoroughly the, the biblical books of Daniel and Revelations mm. because he wanted to understand the momentum or the unfolding of time and history. So he made a statement. He said, at, the, at about the time of the end, mm. a body of men would be raised up who would turn their attention to the prophecies and insist upon their literal interpretation in the midst of much clamor and opposition. Today, we have much clamor and opposition. Yeah. In Genesis 1, we had clamor and opposition. And in Genesis 1, the clamor and opposition was described in the beginning of Genesis that the earth was without form and void. Okay. So it's the same, it's the same figure of speech. Yeah. Why is he saying that? Because the earth does not end. Mm. It is human beings who end. Who end. Yeah. Today we say we're getting ready to go to the sixth extinction. Yeah. But the earth does not end. Mm -hmm. So I'm only saying until we go back and we find those right principles for social development yeah. and stay in harmony with mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. we will continually deteriorate or have the social decadence that we find today. Okay. Men, women, societies have got to seek truth, just like they do in the hospital, just like if with your phone that you have right now. Mm. If you're going to repair your phone on something has gone wrong, if you've got an Apple phone, yeah. you will not take your phone to Samsung. No, no. Because there's a truth about the design of, of the, the Apple phone, phone yeah. that yeah. you go to Apple. So let me then ask the question. Mm. Why do we keep relegating the creative source that created the creation mm. and form a ritualistic pattern to it, which has emotion to it, then going back to find what were the principles that he gave for human existence. And if we find those principles, mm. then we will answer a social reality that Yeshua ben Yosef, as the Christian said, Jesus mm. said. In the Lord's Prayer, he said, and this was not a prayer for mm. the church, mm. he said, pray that the kingdom of God comes on earth okay. and the will of God be done, not in the sky, mm. on earth. Wow, this is very interesting. Now, uh, I want to go back to one of, the, um, one of the issues that you mentioned, which is very, very interesting. And it's, it's something to do with the uh, uh, a presentation you gave at the Culture uh, uh, Center for Cu Culture and Cultural Diplomacy. Diplomatic Studies. And you called education as a key Afri in Africa's development. And you said you need, uh, it can unite minds with a uh, common interest work in the in to work in their interest. Nigeria is one of the most, developed, uh, one of the most educated uh, Nigerians, are some of the most <coughs> educated people in the world. Uh, I don't know how many PhD holders, or, you know. Every, every have, four yeah. in yeah. one has a PhD. Yeah. Now, in 60 years, Nigeria hasn't developed. 
they have, they, they have evolved over issues, they have argued over this, they have oil, they have got everything. But the structure is not coming up. Uh, not only Nigeria, I could say so many other African countries. Education is there. Now, did you mean the education of making sure that we, we all come together and look at the past, look at, because you, you try to mention that, the, 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 showing that somebody who hasn't gone to school is not an illiterate. He's, he's educated in his own way, in a natural, natural way, the way our ancestors or our grandmothers and grandfathers were. You can't call them an illiterate, an illiterate because they had the knowledge of how to live and how to survive. Now, nowadays, modern days, you go to work, you got money, you go do, then they consider you to be educated. But what kind of education did you mean? The education that unites whether you are uh, making us Ubuntu like humans so that there isn't really that much between you and me, whether you have a PhD or not. We are all Ubuntu. You are who you are because I'm, I am who I am. Can we, is that the kind of thing that you meant that Africa needs to embrace? so that it, it doesn't have necessarily, because we are we're embracing education in a different way. If somebody's not educated, you can't even get a job some, in some other. But others are educated and they don't have jobs. So they're not using the, the, the structure of which education you are trying to bring forward. That comes back to um, uh, ben, Amin, ben Amin Ben Israel's uh, concept of, of um, Demon, Demona that Africa could, 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 could pick its knowledge from. Can that work? Could you, could you explain that? I, I mean, I th I, 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 maybe I, I got it wrong. No, it's, it's, it's okay. I yeah. think, I think, uh, I think the, the challenge that we have right now mm. is a challenge that Dr. Kwame Nkrumah also spoke about in his bringing Ghana mm. to the forefront. Okay. okay. And he spoke about neocolonialism. Yeah. See, today we mm. can see, many of us can only see through the perspective of our cognitive plasticity. All right. That is how our brain has been fashioned by the knowledge or the program that has been put inside. The mindset. I, I would actually say the knowledge. The knowledge, okay. That has been put okay. in. Okay. So depending on who your colonial master was, yeah. you can only see reality via mm. how he has trained you to see okay. reality. Mm. So what we call education today, you can leave Africa... And you can go to those areas which are the cradles of those educational um, knowledge bases. Yeah. The Oxfords, mm. the Cambridges, the Harvards, and the Yale. Yeah. And then see what, have, what social reality or substance have they produced out of that education that uplifts the quality of human value and existence today. Mm. Most of those countries that have had the education that we are running after yeah. are still countries of great social injustice, human deprivation or deterioration. Yeah. And you can go on. Even the food, the element of foods and others, the um, Social interaction between different communities. It's yeah. chaotic. Mm. Now, you look at the ecology, the waters in those supposedly well-educated and advanced areas. Yeah. And nearly every element that is needed for the survival of humanity is being destroyed. Now, now we're talking about education now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. again, we go back. This is why the Hebrew element is mm. needed. Mm. Because based on the Hebrew element, it says you will know a tree. By the fruit it bears. Okay. In, in again going to Ghana, mm. they say a crab does not give birth, does not give birth to a bird. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, mm. we, when I made that statement, mm. I was challenging mm. the concept of education today. Mm. Because the concept of education today that we've been given is not truth literate. It does not deal with or promote the correct knowledge of reality. Mm. We see the results of what we have learned today and the results continually frustrate us because they do not produce the aspirations upon which we learned those things. So you're right. Yeah, yeah. So if you are Euro literate mm. and you were created by a dominant culture that wanted you to become you and your 
national resources to become a support mechanism of their hegemony, you will not be given a mind to create something that would support you. What do I mean? Okay. So just about three years ago, mm. it was finally, finally found out mm. that 14 African countries that were dominated by France, mm. still their national finances were still being sucked into the French National the French, Bank. Yeah, yeah, 14! Yeah. Yeah, 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 but these yeah. were individuals who were very well French educated. Mm. How do you expect them to develop? Mm. And the majority of those resources are upon the face of the uh, upon the African continent. Yeah, yeah. The, the Niger um, gentleman, the Niger uh, lecturer I, I invited here on the show was saying something similar. So, so yeah. we, we now have to question education mm. because with all our intellects, we still are importing or asking the Chinese to build our roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still are asking KMPG or the accountants to come to account for us. Yeah. We still, when we have a military a situation we still are getting military consultants or the American High Command mm. to come on in and define our military strategy. Yeah, yeah. Even though we've had people who've been to Sandhurst. Mm. I, know, I know. So so we have to begin to evaluate what kind of education have we received and that's what I was speaking about. Yeah. Now, because okay. just, just okay. hold your hold your horses right. there. Let okay. me finish. Okay, it. okay. Because mm. if this form of education has not helped mm. to evolve Africa to its high state, then it means it's not working for us. Yeah. And in simplicity, if you go to a doctor after 400 years mm. and he gives you the same diagnosis yeah. and you're still not <laughs> feeling well, <laughs> would you go to the same doctor? I don't think so. But we've taken yeah. our best minds. Yeah. I went to Achimoto school. Yeah. We've taken our best minds. And it doesn't mean that we have not gain some things, mm. but we still have not surpassed those high levels of social and civil development that we had prior to the landing of the European influence on the continent of Africa. The issue is, could we simply say it's the mindset? It's the mindset which we have. Because it's just like when you find somebody who wants to be a multimillionaire and is not educated and he starts I mean, I can give examples of uh, maybe, uh, what's his name, uh, the Bill Gates or the, um, the sportsmen who are successful in, in sports, the Muhammad Ali's and so on. The, the, the mind that they have that they can achieve something, it goes on, the footballers or the boxers or anybody who is in sports. Uh, the key thing you are told, I, I played sports before, so I'm, I'm speaking as a sportsman. Um, you, you have that mindset that I can beat this man, regardless if that's boxing. If it's football, it's the mindset you have. You find smaller teams beating bigger teams because the, the, the mindset they have is that they can do it. It's the determination you have. Now, when it comes to us, the mindsets which are of the leaders and the mindsets of those people, even within the government, is that, no, we can't do it. Someone else has got to do it for us. Uh, is that something that people like you now who are looking at humanity, you come to, to say, no, why are you telling me you can't do this? I mean, we were speaking to an American guy one day, and he says the determination of the Taliban in, in, in Pakistan, the Taliban, the way they have, that's why they're back in, in power. The determination of these Taliban people, the kind of indoctrines that they give them, makes them fighters, makes them, regardless of what, the war in Vietnam, the way the local people were so determined, the people who were fighting, despite the fact that America had everything, it was so powerful, but because of the villagers and all that, they went on, they were using smaller ways of even uh, uh, killing Americans. Uh, you know, the uh, bombs that they were making, but the Americans had a massive power, you know, but they still failed in Vietnam. Why? Because of the mindset. Now, I'm looking at that in Africa as well. How do we set that mindset in Africa? so that we can be determined to be successful. It's never gone away. If you go to The Economist magazine today, yeah. it's never gone away. And this is why the emergence of mm -hmm. the Hebraic culture mm -hmm. with its mindset becomes mm -hmm. very significant on mm -hmm. the continent of Africa. Okay. Because it gives you another perspective of how you see reality. Yeah. It gives you, remember, just as an archetype, when David 
went to face Goliath. Yeah, exactly. There was exactly. a mindset. That's a good they were all yeah. children of Israel. Yeah, yeah. But all his brothers were scared of Goliath. Goliath, yeah. But David had another education. Mm. He was not trained in the corridors of militarism like mm. his brothers. Yeah, yeah. David's training was to be in harmony with the elements. Mm. He was not trained to depend on the sword and the um, armor. Mm. He was trained to deal with the elements, to trust in the elements, yeah. the phenomena and the forces of the creation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Africa, I wanted to just say the mindset. Mm. We now in this day have to begin to bring in those examples of how we have done it without the paper qualification or without the Harvards because we continually do it every day. Okay, okay. And what do I mean? Africa has over three thousand different diverse groups each with its own perspective mm. of reality the we're the more we're language. the most diverse mm. body of humanity on this planet in mm. fact even china with 1.4 billion people only have 16 diverse groups we have over 3,000 mm. with our own form of cosmology um, herbs mm. uh, social systems mm. traditional systems what, what am i talking about mm. in the midst of us we have that knowledge but we have been given another mindset whereby we have thrown or put away that knowledge yeah. and we have adopted a knowledge or a tool of thinking that doesn't work for us. Mm. So again, you go back, you see when you take mm. again those social sciences mm. away from the biblical narrative and you look at them through the social science perspective, yeah. then the key of the great intellect, Hosea, comes to bear. Okay. And he makes a statement. It says, my people... Yeah, yeah. are destroyed mm. for lack of knowledge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My people mm. are destroyed, not for lack of not going to church or the mosque, mm. but they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Yeah. So if we use the African reality, mm. the African reality is being destroyed or the glory is being destroyed for the lack of the application of the African knowledge which exists. Yeah, okay. Now, let's bring it into the forefront. Mm. Kwame Nkrumah. Yeah, yeah. From 1951 to 1966, mm. took Ghana in leaps and bounds. Mm. Thomas Sankara, yeah. Burkina Faso, the land of our fathers. Mm. We need leadership with integrity, mm. who have the people at their heart. And finally, there are many others, but in Rwanda, mm. after 1994, the most traumatic genocide which has ever happened in mm. humanity, mm. most traumatic. Yeah. In three months, they lost nearly 800,000 people with machetes. Yeah. Meaning nearly every day, yeah. every day they were losing 10,000 people. Mm. But they were able to repair their mind out of that genocide. Yeah. Don't speak about it. And from 1994 to today, mm. nearly in under 30 years, Rwanda has become an exemplary mm. country of what? Of social fast track and highly sophisticated development yeah. both in their african humanity but even it's now referred to as the silicon valley let's take another country malawi because yeah. i spoke with the malawi diplomat when i was in berlin okay when they drew up their program for food security mm. the imf for one of these major places said it's not going to work but then as you said mm. they had trust in their own indigenous sciences and technologies yeah and they rebuffed the I or whichever organization it was, mm. the advice, and went ahead to do as they knew would work. Mm. Today, Malawi has become a breadbasket and food security in this environment. Yeah. So the Hebrews, mm. what we're doing, mindset. First, yeah. a house divided against itself, Steve, cannot stand. Cannot stand, yeah, yeah. Many of the great African potential was kidnapped and taken into slavery. We have to bring those minds back to their family. That we both share, have a common humanity to share all the things we've learned. Mm. And then evolve those perspectives, those institutions, those programs which work for us. Okay. okay. Which work for us. The major issue now is you have something here which is very interesting. And which, as you're saying, it's, it's about humanity. Humanity does not sell in Africa. They will look, if you go for example now to Ghana, I'm just giving an example, and the president of Ghana and someone else, and you try to sell the idea 
to Ghana about humanity and the way you present it and the way you look at it, you've studied it and it starts from home somewhere and you build it up. How do you sell it to a government? They don't like it. They, they would rather <laughs> have the stuff because it goes back to the mindset. You can't, we need something or maybe a popular person like a, a famous footballer, a box or something to go in and sell the idea. I don't know whether you have ever had that. Because if it goes with someone who is more famous, who is known or something like that, maybe the, 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 the top officials in governments will buy the idea and try and sell it to schools. Because it's a, it's a very good concept you have. And I've been watching your videos and seeing that. And I said, I need to have this man on my show. Um, because the concept is good. But how do we sell it? How do we sell it? In Let me ask a question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. How did you sell your shows? Oh, wow. How did you get people attracted to your shows? Uh, you had shows. Okay. The shows began mm -hmm. to unpackage mm -hmm. the brilliance of discourse which the shows had. Of course, of course. You yeah. didn't go out on the street mm. trying to get somebody to convince him. Yeah. You first produced the model. Okay. It is the model mm. that becomes the tipping point All right. of whether something works. So we don't worry about first produce the model. Okay. And all people of change mm. understand that the change first begins with them. Okay. Okay. If you be, are able to produce the change mm. and the change provides the solutions to the predicament of the society, mm. society by its natural inclination will move to what works much better for them. Us, mm. the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. That's why we went into Liberia. Mm. Liberia was first to prepare ourselves on a moral base that we could appreciate humanity and we could work together. That, most most yeah. of the challenges we have mm. is we don't know how to work or agree and put our collective human resource and intellect together. Mm. They call it the contemporary PhD, which is not the doctor of philosophy, yeah. but it's pull him down or pull her down. Yeah, yeah. So we don't know how to do that. So first we've got to be able to know how do we interact interact together and that was our beginning mm. so by the time we got into Israel northeastern Africa yeah. we already knew how to cooperate work together mm. to see not the best egotistical individual but what was the best thought for our humanity and we built around it today mm. in Dimona we have the village of peace okay which okay. is which is a center where you can go and you would see people living with minimal conflict or violence or close to none and being able to release that interaction into higher expression and institutions it was from that okay, okay. it was from that can i ask is there is there no racism at all there you don't you have never faced racism at all there we have we have we yeah. we, we, fa we face racism yeah but again like gandhi says yeah, yeah. rather than curse the darkness you yeah. produce the light okay so okay. in our midst yes we we face it mm. but steve mm. we everybody's now facing an existential um struggle okay let me ask you a question mm. if you went out there and a dog started barking at you. Yeah. Would you stop and try to teach the dog, don't bark at me, I'm a human being. No, or no. you would keep on going to do what you have to do. You've got a radio interview. Of course. We've yeah. got, you said the mindset. Yeah, yeah. We're now directing ourselves. It is imperative. Mm. It is imperative yeah. that some people, a body of people, mm. have to produce an example, not just for Africa, yeah, yeah. but for the whole world. Mm. We have taken on that charge. Yeah. We are well at this particular time positioned by what we have done in our midst mm. which have caused people to come to see what we have done in our midst mm. the winnie mandela's yeah, yeah. the uh, president the prime minister of um israel shimon Peres, when yeah. he had his birthday gifts he came to demona yeah. the whitney houston's yeah. the stevie wonders all these people are coming because we have been able not to talk it mm. but to do it and then they come, as the prophet says, to learn what has worked. We're still in a process of learning. We're still learning about many things. The Matoke in Kenya and the <laughs> Nim tree. And the, and the Nim tree. We're still learning. But everything we learn that yeah. works, yeah. we first use ourselves as a social experiment. Okay. And then when it works in us, mm. we're able not to talk it but to share it. Let me close one thing. Yeah. When COVID, mm. when people were taking vaccinations, yeah. we believed in the African science of being able to strengthen the, human, the immune system. Yeah. We went and we 
treated ourselves based on what we ate, mm. how we governed our body, etc. Mm. The threshold of COVID positive in our community in the first wave when people were dying was close to zero. In the second wave, even with the variations of the COVID organism, we still have had a very low threshold. To this date, mm. the great majority, close to nearly everyone of the community, have not had to go the way the world had said that you had to take the, the uh, vaccination. The vaccination. But yeah. we have been able to maintain mm. that example itself mm. is laudable. But that's not all. We took the same programs of health to Ghana. But they first came over to check when and Kwashika see, came and, and, and see, see how, how it works. works. Yeah, and yeah. they saw elderly women running three times a day. They saw big men who in their 70s playing basketball and being able to stretch. They saw children. They saw great intellect. It was upon that that the Minister of Health took the regenerative program to Ghana mm. as an example of how we could have a medical institution which would strengthen the human resource because a lot of the national coffers mm. goes into treating sick people yeah. rather than strengthening them. So it's the example. Yeah. It's not talking to power. It is being the example of the power. I, 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 I agree. I see that. But... Uh... I don't know where where, where my skepticism uh, 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 come from in a sense that having seen what power does and having seen what uh, 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 great minds are being uh, told not to not even come because they they will convince. I mean, I've seen Lumumba being refused visas to travel to certain parts of Africa when he's preaching, when he's talking about uh, development of Africa and and what is going on. And um, uh, there were quite a number of other Africans uh, who are pre who come in and they want to show something, but the negativity that they face over a period of time uh, forces them to say, "Okay, you don't take this, then then I'm off." But it, it still comes back to the selling point: uh, 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 people to come and see the model of what is going on oh. and accept it. But I, again, it comes back to you. All, How men, do you sell it? all mm. men and women of vision. Mm -hmm. All men and women of vision. And again, you, go, you see, now we're going back to the social yeah, exactly, principles. Exactly, exactly, exactly. In the yeah. beginning, yeah. in the beginning mm. of how you, how you correct society, yeah. you have to create in your image and after your likeness. Mm. You see, now this is no longer biblical. Yeah. You can't say one thing and expect somebody to do something okay. else. Okay, we're, we're coming towards the end of the program. And... Um, um, the, the whole issue of looking at how the concept worked. Do you see a future African Israel as Prime Minister of Israel at some point in future because of their the, the, the numbers over there? And, and I think it will be inevitable yeah. that based on the kind of intellect yeah. and the kind of ability, the competence mm. to develop the land to its true purpose, Mm. that it would be inevitable that one in the midst would become the shepherd okay. on, on, on the purpose of that land. That land is to be a land to be an example mm. of peace, of the value of human existence, yeah. and of bringing and uplifting a high society mm. in which justice is. So I see it will be inevitable. Mm. If it's not even a Hebrew Israelite, it will be one who have the same mindset. Okay. The same mindset to be able to this thing. So it's not so much significant about the color. Yeah. First, the uh, being a Hebrew Israelite is more of a state of mind than it is of a cultural factor. Even though we should not deny mm. that the biblical children of Israel yeah. were people of African origin. Okay. But I feel it's the much more the mindset must be there, and that mindset would cause Israel. It's very important okay. that the promise given to Abraham yeah. must stand. And it, the promise given to Abraham was that, and through you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So it's inevitable that that land and the people there will have to live their true purpose because if we ever needed a land to show peace, yeah. not all the other things, we need it now. Okay, I just want to acknowledge a number of people before you go. Wilson Lobeya, who says it's great discussion, and he thanks you. Uh, Eya Sone as Asholo, I think he says, says look, um, Shalom, uh, Dr. Uh, Yehoshaphat, Van for you. And um, of course, he repeats the same thing, says that a lot of what you said is, makes uh, too much sense. Uh, Jack Elocho, 
uh, is, uh, watched the show and is also thanking you. A number of them are saying, look, um, it's, uh, they really like the concept that you have and they do hope that, uh, you know, Africa moves along. Um, we come to the end of the program. I want to thank you so much for coming on our show and telling us all about it. And I do hope that somewhere around there, the African leaders are watching this and uh, will come uh, to their uh, senses uh, with what Nkrumah had in mind and uh, the, the model that you have in Israel uh, could easily be sold to Africa because it, it's a working model, you know, if the leaders have come to see it. And I do hope that it, it moves on to the rest of Africa at some point. And I also thank you very much. And I hope that mm -hmm. some of the African leaders who are not leaders but are children watching at this particular time yeah. will take inspiration to become those leaders of integrity and vision for Africa and the continent. Thank you very much for inviting me. Okay. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for being with us uh, in today's program. And I do hope that you've learned quite a lot from uh, a great, the great man here. We'll be together again next week for another edition of Africa Speaks. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Wait. Thank you. My name is Kofi Adoko. I'm a principal solicitor at Adoko Solicitors. I am also a duty solicitor. Anytime a person is arrested and taken to a police station, or if the police invite you to the police station for a voluntary